All right, so we are going to export this Rhino file and import it into Revit. So I'm going to show you guys how if you're coming from Rhino, you can do that. So the first thing you're going to have is your Rhino file, um, and then you're going to go to File. Sorry, you're going to pick the thing that you want to export, and you're going to go to File, Export Selected, and you're going to take it into an SAT file, which is going to be up here at the top, the ACIS SAT. And you're going to take it and give it a name. So we're going to name this Form 1. Click OK. And it's going to give you some SAT export options, and you can accept the default. Click OK. And it will export it. So once that's done, you can go to your Revit file. So this is the Revit project that I gave you. And then I would go to the site plan. And I want to zoom in a little bit where you have this green scope box available to you. And then we're going to go to the architecture tab, component and model in place. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow Revit to categorize this. So I'm going to go to generic models and click OK. And it's going to bring up a dialog box that wants you to name it. So I'll name it form form one or from one form one. Okay. And then once you do that it sends you into what's called sketch mode. So you'll see this check in the X up here. Um, and once you're in this sketch mode you're going to go to insert and you are going to go to Import CAD. And if you click on the Import CAD, you just go to where you save that SAT file. You go to my desktop, and down in the Files of Type, you want to select SAT. And I'm going to select Form 1, and I'm going to click Open. And it's going to place that SAT file right there. And then once that's visible to me, I'm going to click Finish Model. And then I'm going to go to my 3D view here and zoom in on that guy. Once you're here, you can go to your Object Styles. You can get there by going to Manage and Object Styles. And in the Object Styles dialog box, <clears throat> if you scroll down, you will see Generic Models right here. And over here is a material option. And if you click on that, it'll give you this little dot, dot, dot. And you'll click on that, and it'll open up a material browser. Now, your material browser may look like, may be closed up. Make sure you get it open so you can see this side, and make sure that your library is available so this turns your library panel on and off. And you can choose another material. So I'm just going to type aluminum in here. And down here are the materials that are on your hard drive. And to get them up into your file, you need to hit this little up arrow. And it'll place that up into the materials that are in your project. Now, one thing that's useful is that when you have the material selected under graphics, which shows the um, what is current in the viewport, you can check Use Render Appearance. And that will take the appearance, which is what renders, and put that into the shaded area. So it will have pretty much the same color as when it renders. And then if I click OK, hit Apply, you'll see that it will apply that material to my object. Now, if you want to update the material um, using your visibility graphics, you can go into VV. And that will give you your visibility graphics. And again, you would scroll down to your generic models because that's what we imported it as. And then you can adjust things in your generic model. So if I go to patterns here and click on override, and I go to color and change the color to green, click OK, and solid fill, click OK, and hit apply. Nothing happens. Nothing happens because right now we're actually on realistic, which actually takes the appearance 
from the material. If I go to shaded, you'll see that the green shows up. And if I go to realistic, which takes the appearance instead of the graphics tab, <clears throat> it will show the color that it renders. So no matter what you set in the visibility graphics here for pattern surface, it will always render what the material is. So for example, if I go back to my object styles and I scroll down to my generic model material here, here we have a, the visibility graphics overrides this color in the graphics tab and the appearance is what renders. So no matter, no matter what you do with visibility graphics, it's going to render what this tab looks like. Okay. The other thing that you can do, of course, is I'm going to go ahead and turn off my sun path and turn off my floor and turn off my scope box and I'm going to turn on my section box. All right. And that will size the section box to the extents. And if I come in and do a section of that, scroll around, look at that, I can then of course go to VV and go down to my generic model and do a cut pattern. And I'll just override that with white and solid and click OK and click apply and that comes out as white. Now even if you render, the render will not render this color. This will only show up in the viewport. Um, and just again, if I go to shaded, it takes the override from the visibility graphics. So that's pretty much um, how you get your object in if you're using Rhino and adjust it.